So a lot has been said over the years about the effects of a zinc and magnesium deficiency on testosterone production. However, there's actually some interesting research to suggest that a potassium deficiency, which is another dietary mineral, may have even more detrimental effects on testosterone production. So in this video, what I want to do is uh, take a super deep dive into the effects of potassium on testosterone. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library, where we take an evidence-based approach to to nutrition and supplementation for men. If you are new to the channel, do yourself a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So potassium is a dietary mineral that serves as uh, one of your primary electrolytes and is the primary intracellular electrolyte, which means that it helps your body to retain fluids in intracellular spaces, whereas sodium and chloride are your primary extracellular um, electrolytes that help to retain water in extracellular spaces. Now, one of the more interesting things about potassium is that your body requires more potassium per day than any other mineral by far. And the next um, closest to it is chloride. Now, your body requires roughly 4.7 grams of potassium per day, uh, whereas it only requires roughly 2.3 grams of chloride per day. Now, even though one of the primary roles of potassium is to maintain fluid balance in the body because it is a dietary electrolyte. It also has a ton of other functions as well, including maintaining proper electrical stimulation in the body, which has a major role in nerve function, vascular tone, blood pressure, blood sugar regulation, and kidney health. Now, sodium typically gets a super bad rap for causing things like high blood pressure. However, there's actually some interesting research to suggest that sodium isn't inherently bad, but is bad uh, when it's consumed in um, improper proportions to proper potassium intake. Now, because sodium and potassium have opposing effects in the body, uh, when you consume too much sodium in relation to proper potassium intake, your body will have uh, the tendency to hold on to fluids in extracellular spaces such as the bloodstream, which can lead to things like high blood pressure. Now, one way to negate this would be to obviously lower your sodium intake. However, Ever, because sodium is also an essential dietary mineral, um, there is a case to be made that a much better protocol would be to simply increase your potassium intake in relation to your sodium intake. Now, aside from all these super critical roles that potassium appears to play in the body, um, it also appears to play a critical role in hormone production. And one of the most critical uh, hormonal pathways that potassium appears to uh, play a role in is uh, the communication between the high hypothalamus in the testes and the production of testosterone. Now, there isn't a ton of research on this quite yet. However, all of the research that does exist now in preclinical trials does appear to uh, point to one simple fact. When you decrease potassium intake, testosterone levels plummet. Now, in this first study that we're going to be looking at, the researchers took a group of rodents and restricted their potassium intake for 15 days. And to their surprise, found that restricting potassium intake led to a 94% decrease in total testosterone levels. A potassium deficiency in this study almost completely abolished testosterone production. And the researchers of the study concluded that to our knowledge, this result shows for the first time that potassium modulates circulating testosterone and hence might regulate androgenic actions in both accessory sex organs and extragenital tissues. Now, because the results of this study were so dramatic, uh, the researchers of this study actually did a follow-up study a few years later to see if one, the results were as dramatic as they were in this study, or two, um, to see if they could identify any possible mechanisms of action. However, before we get into that study, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor. Now, if you have ever wondered where your testosterone levels are, I would highly recommend looking into my friends over at Let's Get Checked. They have an awesome at-home testosterone test that you can actually take from the comfort of your own home. Once you order your test, they actually send it directly to your doorstep and then you send it back to them and then you actually get your results within a matter of days through their online portal. And what's more is that they performed nearly 3 million at-home blood 
blood tests and their testosterone test is by far their most popular. Now I typically recommend that guys check their testosterone roughly once a year just to keep an eye on their testosterone levels. And so if this is something you've never done before, um, make sure to check out the description down below for 25% off of your test. Now in this study, they not only tested testosterone levels at day 15, but they also tested testosterone levels at day six and day 30 and found extremely similar results to the first study. After only six days of potassium restriction, the rodents experienced a 94% reduction in blood plasma testosterone levels, a 97% decrease after 15 days, and a 99% reduction after 30 days. 30 days of potassium restriction almost completely eliminated testosterone production in this model. But what's more is that there was also a 75% reduction in testicular testosterone concentrations after 60 hours, a 95% decrease after six days, and nearly a 100% reduction after 15 days. Now this led the researchers to hypothesize that not only is a potassium deficiency uh, leading to a reduction in uh, testosterone output from the testes, but it's also so shutting down the production of testosterone in the leddic cells of the testes as well. They stated that the present results corroborate our previous findings showing that the plasma uh, concentrations of potassium is an important factor that modulates circulating testosterone in mice and demonstrates that hypokalemia produces a marked fall in testosterone concentrations in both plasma and testes. Our results indicate that the effect of the potassium concentrations on the synthesis of testosterone can be caused caused by an alteration in the pulsatile liberation of luteinizing hormone by the gonadotropes. Now the exact mechanisms here aren't quite known, but it is believed that potassium has a critical role in helping to uh, regulate the release of both LH and uh, GnRH from the hypothalamus and pituitary, which regulate the production of testosterone in the testes. It appears that potassium helps to regulate the membrane potential of the plasma membranes um, of the specific brain regions. Uh, that are responsible for regulating the uh, production of testosterone by uh, releasing luteinizing hormone and gonadotropic releasing hormone. Now, I do think it's also worth noting here that in the first six days of treatment where the rodents experienced a 94% reduction in testosterone, that there was only a 15% reduction in potassium levels. And this seems to indicate that even small drops in plasma potassium levels um, can have an absolutely devastating effect on testosterone production. Now, I do think it's also important to note here that this is only a rodent trial and may not carry over into human trials. However, at the very least, we can conclude that potassium is extremely critical in the production of testosterone in rodents and may possibly carry over into humans as well. And we do know that potassium is an essential dietary mineral. And so it is likely that a reduction in potassium intake can lead to reductions in testosterone in humans as well. Now, when it comes to proper dietary intake of potassium, the RDA for uh, potassium in males is roughly 4.7 grams, which is obviously just under 5 grams. However, dietary surveys consistently show that people in the United States consume far less potassium than recommended, which is why the 2015 to 2020 dietary guidelines for Americans identified potassium as a, quote, nutrient of public health concern. According to data from 2013 to 2014, National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey, in adults age 20 and over, the average daily potassium intake from foods is only 3,000 milligrams for men. Now, this may not appear uh, to be a huge deal, but it does appear that the average American male is consuming roughly 40% less potassium than is typically recommended. And so what I wanna do for the rest of the video is just simply outline some of the best ways to increase your potassium intake, um, either one through dietary food sources or two through supplementation. Now, when it comes to food sources, by far your best dietary sources of potassium are going to be fruits. Things like apricots, squash, prunes, raisins, oranges, bananas, avocados, pretty much any fruit is going to have a uh, fairly large amount of potassium. However, dairy, chicken, beef, and fish are also uh, pretty respectable sources of potassium as well. Now, it's also worth noting here that legumes also appear to be fairly respectable sources of potassium. However, because the potassium that is found in legumes is also bound to phytic acid, it doesn't absorb very well. And so I wouldn't 
uh, heavily rely on legumes for a source of potassium. Now, because of the risk of hyperkalemia, which can lead to cardiac arrest in some individuals, it's fairly difficult to find uh, potassium in supplemental form on uh, dietary supplement shelves. However, if you're looking for um, some supplemental ways to add some potassium into your diet, uh, potassium bicarbonate is going to be one of your better bets simply because one, it's going to safely add some potassium um, into your diet through supplemental means, but also going to provide some bicarbonate, which also has some performance enhancing uh, properties to it in its own right. And so the moral of the story here, guys, is make sure to uh, prioritize potassium into your diet on a daily basis. But other than that, make sure to check out the description down below uh, to get 25% off of your at-home blood test, um, as well as a link to the complete guide to supplementation, which has um, an outline of all of the most proven supplements that you, could, that you can use in order to optimize your testosterone levels naturally, as well as a ton of other health goals. But other than that, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.